Hello, this is Talon Peterson again. Um, this is the second part of the module on model evaluation. In the first part, we dealt with introductory concepts. Uh, in this part, we're going to get some, some practicalities uh, and some performance measures. So, uh, essentially what we want to do is start thinking about what a spatial prediction looks like and uh, what the, the sorts of data that we might overlay on that prediction would be like. So I've drawn a very simple map. Essentially, you can imagine this as being latitude and longitude. And this black line outlines what would be the true distribution of a species if we were to know it. Now, we do our modeling exercise, and we produce a prediction, which I've shown as this blue line. Now, we uh, overlay our independent evaluation data set, and that's this set of Xs. Now, there might be, uh, there might be some Xs here and here, but you can see that those are going to cause us some confusion. And so that's literally what we call this a confusion matrix, which I've summarized here. And it's very simple. Within the truth, those are actual presences. So that's this column. And outside of that true distribution are actual absences, and that's this column. And then our prediction, the same thing. Inside this is predicted present, and outside the blue polygon is predicted absent. And so that essentially leaves us with four regions. This area here is predicted part of the species distribution, and in truth is, and so that is essentially correct prediction of presence. Uh, this area out here is predicted as not being suitable for the species and not being part of its distribution, and in truth it is not. So D also is essentially correct prediction, but in this case of absence. Then we get into the two uh, components of error. We have uh, areas that are predicted to be part of the species distribution but are not. So that is here, B. And we have areas that are in truth part of the species distribution but are not predicted as such. And so that is C. So essentially, uh, A and D are correct prediction, and B and C are incorrect prediction, but of different parts of this, of this map. Okay, so that's the confusion matrix, and you need to pay a lot of attention to the confusion matrix, because it ends up being the basis for a lot of the, um, a lot of the methods that, that get used. Uh, and I'll show you some of this. Let's start out. Remember the difference between performance measures and significance measures. Performance is asking, essentially, how well is this prediction anticipating the truth? And significance is asking questions about whether you're doing better than, than random expectations. But let's start with some of the common performance measures. Uh, we can measure omission error. An omission error we can measure as C over A plus C. And this is very simple. It's the proportion of actual presences that are not predicted correctly. And so right away we can see the complement to this, which is the commission error. And you can guess it's going to be B divided by B plus D. So essentially that is, of all of these absences, and remember all of the caveats about absences, but all of these absences, places where the species is not, how many of them are mispredicted? Now we can look at these things together, and we can ask essentially how many of our, um, of our test points are correctly predicted versus not. So we could have a correct classification rate, CCR, equal to A plus D 
divided by A plus B plus C plus D. Okay, and that would give us an overall correct classification rate. And you'll see in the literature many other measures uh, that are based on the, the, uh, the confusion matrix. And the most common one that you'll see is kappa. And kappa is a simple, essentially just a measure of correct classification rate above and beyond random expectations. Uh, and so those are a bunch of performance measures they're based on the confusion matrix, but I want you to notice one thing. We can, we can use the correct classification rate as the illustration. Notice that correct prediction or incorrect prediction of presences and of absences has the same weight. Okay? So, it's just as much of an error to mispredict an absence as presence as to mispredict a presence as absence. This has pretty serious implications because if you were paying attention in the first module, you know that this kind of error is much less of concern than this kind of error which is to say omission error is much more serious than commission error. And so that is a very strong reason why we should avoid uh, performance measures that weight B and C equally. Okay, that's, a, that's essentially um, a use of a statistic that doesn't fit well with the conceptual basis of what it is we're trying to test. So, uh, that gives you some of the practicalities regarding uh, testing uh, species distribution models and ecological di niche models. Uh, and in a moment, we'll be back with a third piece of this module to talk about uh, some significance tests.